So welcome, everyone. So I know I've heard customers can basically feel very overwhelmed when it comes to navigating the complexities of Graviton adoption. If you're one of them, then you're in the right place. Today, we'll be unveiling a solution that will not only help simplify your Graviton adoption, but it will, it will also, <laughs> sorry, I don't know why it's doing that, but it will also help you unlock significant cost savings. My name is Rosa Corley, and I'm a FinOps commercial architect at AWS. Along with me is my colleague, Rajani. Hi, everyone. I'm Rajani Guptan, and I'm a senior technical account manager with AWS. This is going to be fun. Uh, thank you, Rajani. Rajani and I, along with our GSD team, we have been hard at work developing a tool that we feel will help significantly impact how you manage your cloud resources and costs. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to talk about this dashboard. And basically, what we call it is the Graviton Savings Dashboard. So what we'll do is cover the functionality of the dashboard. We'll figure out, do a live demonstration and we'll provide you with the right resources that you need to get started with your adoption Graviton journey. So I would like you all to imagine that you're standing at the entrance of this maze. This maze is your journey to Graviton adoption. Now, with the show of hands, how many of you have felt like you're at the entrance of this maze, but you do not know where to go? <laughs> Great, thank you. All right, so let me share some of the twists and turns that we often see our customers encounter. As you step into this maze, a thick fog descends. This fog represents the lack of visibility across your Graviton processors. Without that visibility, it's hard to know where your Graviton usage is at. OK, I'm hearing noises. I'm so sorry. Um, and with, with that being said, it's scattered across several different passages. And what we call it on our end, it could be under different accounts, AWS services, and organizations. As you navigate further, you encounter the Hall of Mirrors. Now, each mirror represents a different instance type. Now, which one is a true comparable Graviton resource that you need to get into? It's hard to know, right? So as you navigate even further into this maze, all of a sudden, you start seeing the shifting ground move, making it hard for you to really build a good financial use case as of why you should move into Graviton. So let's start with a quick overview of what AWS Graviton is. It's a custom design processor made for Amazon EC2. It offers two significant advantages. It's up to 40% better price performance and up to 60% less energy consumption. Now, despite these benefits, we know it's a challenge. And that's why we have this new tool. The AWS Graviton Savings Dashboard serves two key purposes. It provides insights into your current existing Graviton usage, and it identifies savings opportunities for Amazon EC2, RDS, ElastiCache, and OpenSearch. Now, before we dive even deeper, who here has heard of the Cloud Intelligence Dashboards? Awesome. And who leverages Kudos Dashboard? Well, that's wonderful to hear and see. For those who have, you're ahead of the game. And for those who have not, no worries. You're in for a treat today. The Cloud Intelligence Dashboard is made of two different categories. You have the foundational, which is primarily giving you your cost and usage insights. And then you have the advanced, which that's where the Graviton Savings Dashboard resides. It's primarily catered for product owners, developers, engineers, and FinOps practitioners. Now I'd like to hand this over to my colleague, Rajani, who will take us over the architecture. So let me walk you through the core components of the Graviton Savings Dashboard. First, let's start with the data sources. On your top left, we have the AWS cost and usage report. This gives you a complete understanding of your AWS usage and spend. Then we use the AWS SDK, which is used to pull a full inventory of your AWS resources across various services. And finally, we use the pricing file. This contains the public pricing information for various AWS services. These three data sources form the foundation of our analysis. We use them to compute and compare your existing Graviton adoption and your potential Graviton savings. 
So on the center here, we have the processing part, which consists of Amazon S3. We use Amazon S3 to store the raw data from the sources. We use Amazon Athena to process the data using different custom tables and views. And finally, we use QuickSight to visualize the highly interactive Graviton Savings Dashboard that you're going to see in a few minutes. So let me call out that this architecture is highly scalable and fully automated. It can handle data from multiple payers across multiple regions and linked accounts. And it's able to give you that comprehensive view across your entire AWS infrastructure, irrespective of how complicated your organization structure might be. And also, by using serverless technologies like Athena and QuickSight, we are able to do this complex computation in a very cost-effective manner. So now that we've seen the core components, let's move on to see how you can deploy this dashboard in your environment. First, we have few prerequisites. We need the AWS cost and usage report, like I mentioned earlier. And we use the optimization data collector lab with the inventory module. This module sets up the automation that is required for pulling the inventory as well as the pricing files. And once we have the prerequisites in place, we deploy the dashboard using the CID CMD tool. So let's walk through those deployment steps. First, we upgrade PIP, which is Python's package manager. Then we deploy the CID CMD tool itself. And finally, we deploy the dashboard using the CID CMD deploy command. It's that simple, and within these three steps, you have the dashboard installed and ready to use within your environment. So we've told you the benefits, how it works, and how to set it up. Now, let's move into a live demo. But let's move into a recorded demo, sorry, where I'll walk you through how you can gather different insights using the Graviton Savings Dashboard. So the dashboard uh, is organized into several tabs for different uh, services. We see EC2, RDS, Elastic Cache, and OpenSearch. For the demo today, let's focus on the EC2 tab. Each tab is broken into two sections. We have the current usage and savings section on the top. And here in the middle, you see the Graviton opportunity section, which is your Graviton potential. The current usage and savings section provides you with a clear snapshot of your current Graviton adoption. The KPIs here allow you to see that you've already saved more than 20K with just a 26.8% coverage. So that's significant. The process, the, key, the two pie charts here allow you to compare what is your existing spend and usage as compared to other processor types within the environment. Let's look at these account level insights. The top account level insights help you to see which teams are already leading in the Graviton adoption journey. So you can showcase them as their success as use case for the rest of the organization. And the bottom level insights allow you to see which teams may need some additional support. Let's look at the coverage section here. This allows you to see how your usage evolves over time. And you can use this to track your progress month over month. The realized savings charts that's next to it allows you to compare what is your existing Graviton spend as compared to other processes, uh, like non-Graviton spend in the environment, and the savings that you have realized as a result. So this is a very powerful visual for FinOps teams to actually see the financial impact of your Graviton adoption. Moving on, we have a few radio buttons here. So let's see them in action. When we switch between them, you can see that the visuals below will get updated to show not just how much you have spent on Graviton, but how much is your savings and your usage and how intensively you are using each instance family. These visuals also allow you to drill down further to see the actual instance types, which allows you to gather further insights. Like here, for example, I can see that the M6G 8x large has provided us with significant savings in account A. 
engineering teams can use this level of information to actually uh, make decisions on future instance selections. Now, all of the information that we have covered in the section above is covered in great detail in this table here. You're able to gather granular insights. Like here, for example, I'm seeing that by utilizing the M6 G8 X large, we have re reached more than, more than 7K savings in the previous month in account A, which is a 20% savings as compared to the M5 8 X large. Also, overall, we have achieved more than 17% savings by utilizing Graviton in our environment. So you see how the current Graviton usage and savings section allows you to gather comprehensive insights about your current Graviton landscape. Now, let's look at the future, which is your Graviton potential. The Graviton opportunity section helps you to see clear targets for your Graviton adoption. Here, you can see that we have an additional potential savings of 60K with the possibility to increase coverage by another 73.2%. Let's look at this, this uh, chart that's next to it, which allows you to see how e are the ease or difficulty of your Graviton adoption. Here, you can see that 65.8% is classified as typically easy. Migration to Graviton is typically easy and straightforward, and we see most customer workloads fall into this category. We see an additional less than five, less than five percent, which requires additional planning, and these could be those instances that you might have an instant savings plan on an RI associated with it, and so it re would require some additional planning. And we also have a very small percentage that we have excluded from the savings calculation, and that is described in this section here. <coughs> now, moving on, we can see our potential Graviton savings by cost chart. Now, this chart, again, like the one we had discussed earlier, allows us to compare what is our current spend on the non-Graviton instance type, and what would be the potential spend if we migrate over to Graviton. So again, this is a very powerful visual for us to see what would be the financial impact of a Graviton adoption. And you can see the savings there as well. The remaining visuals on this chart allow us to dive further into linked accounts, savings implementation type, instance type, and purchasing options. This allows us to see where we can actually focus our efforts. What are those easy targets? Like here, I'm seeing that account A is offering significant savings, followed by C and B. When it comes to instance types, I'm seeing that the M5 instance type offers is, of, is offering significant potential on migration. And also, the on-demand Linux alone is offering more than 46K in savings. So these are potential first candidates for you to think about when you're strategizing your Graviton adoption. Now, I have been saying the compared Graviton instance quite a bit. So where can you see that comparison? And that is broken down in great detail in this table here. You can see that this gives you a direct mapping of your existing instance type and what is the instance that we have compared against. So here, for example, I'm comparing the M5 8x large with the M6 G 8x large. There is also a direct, uh, it directly points you to how much you can save by mi doing that migration. Like here, it is 23K in the previous month, and also the percentage savings that you can achieve on that single instance type. All of this information on this chart can be filtered using the filters on the top. So you can really focus on what's the, pro the different processor types by implementation effort purchasing or purchasing option and operating system. Also, all the visuals on the dashboard as a whole can be filtered using the controls on the top. This really helps you to focus and strategize on different payers, different linked accounts, by instance families, and by region. So you saw how the, gra the Graviton potential section really helps you to get that comprehensive view across what is your Graviton migration opportunities. The remaining sections here provide you with documentations and tools that can help you really jumpstart that Graviton adoption journey. Also, while we covered the EC2 section here today, 
There are similar visuals that are available for the other managed services like RDS, Elasticash, and OpenSearch. So today we saw how the Graviton Savings Dashboard can really empower you to make those data-driven decisions to jumpstart your Graviton adoption journey. So I highly recommend that when you head back from reInvent to deploy this in your environment so you can see what is your Graviton opportunities as well as the cost savings that you can realize. Thank you so much. I'll now hand it back to Rosa to take us through the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Rajani. That was a very insightful demo. So as we conclude, let's recap what we've discovered. We now can see your Graviton processor landscape. We can identify which Graviton resources that would be a comparable fit for your current workloads, and have managed to pr provide a financial breakdown based off of implementation effort and eligibility. Now, simply scan this QR code on this display here, and it will take you directly to our Graviton Savings Dashboard landing page. This will provide you all the resources you need to get started with your Graviton journey. And if you have any questions or would like to know more about it, visit us at the Compute Kiosk at the AWS Village. Thank you for attending our session, and we hope you found it valuable. Take a, please take a moment to uh, fill out the session survey in your mobile app, and we hope you enjoy reInvent. Thank you again. Thank you.